What is up everybody, Huang Zero here, and today we're gonna do a little bit of a discussion talking about the new cards we did receive in uh, some of the future Japanese sets, specifically the training boost as well as some of the ace cards. And joining me for this discussion, we do have Zero, you know, your beloved Gallantmon Coper himself. Hey, what's up guys? Alright, and so, you know, kick us off, we're gonna talk about the training boost because it's a much shorter segment than the aces, um, specifically because training boost, I mean, it's nothing new, right? It's 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 very much so just a cheaper memory boost that digs it a little bit less, um, but it does grab any card of their respective color. So you can grab options, you can grab tamers, um, and these have made a very significant impact on the meta, right? Like, I feel like almost every single deck nowadays uh, plays this in some quantity, and they would rather play this over the memory boost, right? Um, um hmm? generally, yeah. yes. Uh, I, I think at least from because we don't have res we we, ha we don't have the cards in English obviously, right. mm -hmm. and based on Japanese result, it seemed to be the preferred card. Yes, and like on paper that kind of makes sense, right? Like, is of course is top two, but it's two memory and you get two cost reduction mm -hmm. back. Cost reduction for ev evolution is much harder to negate than memory gain. Yes, there, there's way more, like the memory blocker is a lot more common than an evolution cost reduction blocker, right? So, b between the two, so I mean, there's a lot of benefit, and you you paint two memory, and you get two memory back. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a very efficient card, and it grab uh, you know, and the big point is that it grab anything, you know, like before when you're playing certain type of decks that's like heavy on tamer, it feels bad to play memory boost, and yeah, you dig deeper, but then sometimes you bought that you, the tamer that is essential, essential to your, uh, win con, you know, mm -hmm. like it feels really bad, like you're playing I don't know Gallim one. And you bought that the Takalo, you feel really bad, right? right? So it's good in that sense. Um, weather is always better than memory boost. I don't know. And I, I don't think it is either. I think there are a couple of exceptions to the, you know, like when you would play tra uh, memory boost versus training and whatnot. Um, but before we dive into that, I do want to point out that the training boosts have actually done a significant buff to you know decks that, that did heavily rely on those tamers, right? Um, one of the one of the biggest ones is Mirage Galgamon. Mirage Galgamon saw insane success in the Japanese um, format because of the training boost, right? Being able to search for your Thomases while simultaneously grabbing all your remaining Digimon, accelerating your um, you know your curve. It, training boost was a really great buff for Mirage. Uh, similarly, it was also a really great buff for Shine Greymon. The Shine Greymon is dominating, you know, Japan like crazy uh, due to the fact that they now have a way to search for markets, right? But I think yeah. decks, I think decks that don't benefit from training as much are decks that either don't rely super heavily on evolving as heavily, or they're decks that they want to do plays outside of the. Um, Outside of just evolving, right? Um, for example, you have Bellstar. Bellstar is a great example, I feel like, because Bellstar, well, you can't train and boost into a Bellstar, right? But you can memory boost to help mitigate that Bellstar's cost. Um, and there are a plethora of other decks that kind of follow the same vein. Um, another example being like Leopardmon, for example. Leopardmon uh, with the Deva package is another great example of this because uh, when you train boost into your Leopard X, uh, you're losing out on a memory, whereas if you memory boost, you're still going to retain that one memory. You can use that memory boost to help pay for the cost of whatever Leopardmon's reducing to play out to begin with. Um, just in general, it's not cl clear cut by which one you should use. Um, you know, it's, it's not a universal rule, right? But definitely, I think these are... Overall, I would say it's a great addition to the game, but I do think it does have some consequences in itself, uh, sp you know, speeding up the game significantly, right? I do feel like the game has gotten faster because of these cards. What do you think? Yeah, Um. so the argument to make is that these are more dangerous mm -hmm. to have in the game. Because there's such great consistency booster yeah. at almost no drawback. Yeah. Uh, the only drawback that you have from compared them playing to memory boost is memory boost dig two cards deeper. Mm -hmm. But this is basically in, it, it, most of the time in an average deck you may be missing what two targets. Right. And if you're playing like a non like an off color card or something like that, like if you're playing like an analog or a cool boy or mm -hmm. whatever, you, you right or like an ex ante body, you might miss like. To the four target, but uh, it's a card that basically guarantee that you will hit anything that you dig for. It. And on top of that, um, as I'm, you know, as mentioned earlier, it is a cost re it is a memory a form of memory gain that's much harder to negate and deal with. And the opportunity cost is very low because 
you are paying two to get two. Well, with memory boost, you're paying three to get two. So there's that one memory expenditure right. there, right? Yeah, and this this card kind of feel like you can. It, this is always. I, I don't know when you play with these decks mm -hmm. with training boost. I don't know how you feel, but for me, I feel like almost always if I don't have another play. Yeah, you just drop a training, right? Like you just drop a training you just, because you just, it's just you like, like, oh, I'm yeah. at three memory. Let me just double, drop double training, choke to one. Like, oh, it's such a good play, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's such a, such a powerful card uh, in that aspect, and it's such a core. I think I feel like it's a really core part of the game because any mm -hmm. deck that would want to run this card would want to run it at a high count. Like you probably will play like three to four training boosts in most decks that can run it, right? Right. I, 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 do, I do think it is. It's one thing that is important to note though is that with the training boost number one when you do cash them in you have to evolve immediately and two you have to evolve into the, the a digimon of that respective color so if you you know cash in agility training boost which is the green one you have to digivolve into a green digimon uh, so when you have decks that have these like mixed colors war greymon being a great example right sometimes you'll go from like a um you know a black base agumon into a red greymon and then at that point, oh, okay, you you have to use the offensive training boost for that. But then you're missing out on your bottom end, which is all black. And then you run into like this this whole thing. So I, I think that's yeah. building more yeah, Draymond was annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just like I guess the only argument you can really make for it mm -hmm. is that it's a little bit less versatile than the memory game. Yeah, because the memory game you can use it for anything, right? Yeah, like, you can this use it to play a tamer, you can use it to play an option, yeah. hard slam, whatever you want, right? Yeah, but I don't think that's enough of a drawback. For Honestly, most decks, I think, no. for most decks, it's not. Um, I feel like these. Should, I feel like these should have cost three, to be honest. Yeah, no, they. I, I think. I think they should. They. They one hundred percent should have been a higher cost. Um, I think the drawback. Um, it's just, it's just not enough. It's they've significantly sped up the game. Um, but they're good. Like I, I, if they feel good to play. Um, and I, I yeah. think they help a lot of decks. Uh, more so than it, than it like kind of like ruins the balance of the the dynamic, right? Because now it's just we're yeah. getting consistency to decks that didn't have consistency, right? Yeah, I I think the reason people don't like this is that it just boosts consistency for everything across yeah. the board in the game, which is a form of power creep, right? Consistency right. is a form of power creep. So it as a whole, it does power creep the game up mm -hmm. a level, and it makes stuff more consistent and faster. Right. Okay. And then now, but, oh go yeah oh, yeah. Yeah, but I don't think that's like a bad thing. Maybe no. people would disagree, for, but from my perspective, balancing through RNG has never been like a good mm -hmm. feeling. Right. It, like a deck being bad because it high roll and extreme low roll, to me, isn't good design. No, it's not. I, I, yeah, I think every deck should have a certain amount of consistency. Maybe some sh are more consistent than others, but having a card that boosts the consistency of the game across the board. Uh, because especially, uh, it, I I felt this very strongly when I recently, you know, I, I recently pick up uh, Shadowverse, right? Mm -hmm. So when I play that game, being able to tutor, which is um to search through your deck for a specific card, right, is a feeling that I was sorely missing from Digimon. So Digimon does not have this. So I think without going in that direction, and assuming they they, I think they mentioned at some earlier point like. Basically, they never want us to have the ability to switch to the deck. No, uh, I, which, I, which, to be fair, I don't. I don't think we need it to begin with. In, in this yeah. game specifically, you I mean you, you fucking draw for everything. You draw for breathing, you know. Right, right, right. <laughs> but I'm just saying that's like yeah. that's the design perspective of the team. Maybe that changed because they have a new team mm -hmm. and everything. But I distinctly remember early on in the game, that was one of like the discussion point uh, on like a Q and A for mm -hmm. one of the magazine. Uh, I may be misremembering, but I, I could have sworn they said that they never want you to have the ability to search through your deck for any uh, to grab a specific card. Yeah. So I think this is a good compromise. So overall, yeah, I think I would rate these like a B plus in terms mm -hmm. of like help for the game. I wish they were a little bit more expensive. Yeah, I think overall, uh, you know, I, I do agree that training boost they should have been more expensive, but what it brings to the game, I think, is a good thing. Um, that being said, speaking of other mechanics, we do have Ace. Um, and with comes Ace, we have Overflow. So Ace is, you know, it's it's quote-unquote, I, I say quote-unquote air quotes and everything like that, um, it's the hand trap of Digimon, right? Um, oh no, you can Digivolve on your opponent's turn. Ah, you, you know, like people, people when this was first revealed, they're like, oh, we're, not, we're just playing Yu-Gi-Oh now, you know, we're just hand trapping everyone, but... Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, first of all, I hate the term hand trapping. I, it's, not trap. my, it, it's not a hand trap, it's not a hand trap. Yeah, it, it's, that's one of my pet peeves. People keep saying hand trap. Do they even know what hand trap means? Yeah. Like, these cards are... 
cards that have very specific timing aren't really hand trap. Hand trap just negate anything that you do. Like yeah. these don't really negate everything that you do. So I I, I, I would hesitate to call this a hand trap at all. It's just mm -hmm. a form of interaction during your opponent turn. Yeah. Um so the fact that these have a specific timing, the fact that you can interact with the stack prior to them even getting the blast, you can just choose not to swing. Like there's there's a plethora of things you can do to deny the aid the the hand trap play, if you will. But um and so it's also super telegraph. Oh, my opponent, had, my opponent left a level four stack on the field. What, what is he going to do with oh, it? Oh, it could, it could, be, it could be anything, five. bro. Yeah, like purple Melga has a level five stack on the field. I guess I should attack. But yeah, so the first the first aces that we did end up getting, we did receive War Graham on ace as well as Metal Guru on ace. Um, and, and just overall, some of these aces, some of them have made a very significant meta impact, and then some of them are kind of just like complete misses and just have yeah. to be right? Yeah, um, like uh, Melga is probably among the higher yeah, end in terms Melga, of power level. Melga Ace, very, very good card. This card saw a uh, quite a lot of success in Japan uh, right before War Guru on promo had gotten hit, right? Uh, this yeah. was this was the time period between before before BT14 had came out, come out in Japan. It was Melga Ace starter deck with war guru on promo and it, and it was like winning every single event left and right it was just it was so good because it, it's it's set, it's fundamentally just ex1 melga for zero right and that's that's broken that's just that's just stupid bro yeah you you have because you have the ability to evolve for zero and mm -hmm. and then you also have the ability to skip your opponent turn yeah if they're trying to counter aggro you so it's really strong um, but you know, meanwhile, yeah, War Greymon, which I feel is the much weaker car, and didn't see that much play. So it sees, it sees, it sees some semblance of play. Like it sees like a one or two of here and there, but nowhere near as yeah. much as like Melga did. Um, and yeah. you're usually, usually using War Greymon Ace, not so much as a defensive card, but actually more so of an aggressive card because it can swing twice. Um, oh yeah. Do you think we should explain to the audience what Ace does? Right, and so with Ace, so Ace Digimon, um, they have a a keyword called Blast Digivolution. Blast Digivolution allows you to digivolve during your opponent's attack step, um, you know, on your opponent's turn, it will assuming you have the right level. So if you have a level 5 uh, Digimon with Greymon in its name, or a black level 5, you can Blast Digivolve into War Greymon during your opponent's attack. Um, it comes, it, you know, it generally comes with like some wind evolving, some other effects and stuff like that, but... Yeah, and also costs zero. Right, and it costs zero when you blast Digivolve. The drawback, however, is the overflow mechanic, which is whenever this card uh, would be removed from the battle area or underneath this card would be uh, moved. So like, for example, if you get rid of the War Greymon, if you evolve over the War Greymon and that stock, the stack gets removed, as long as it's the, you know, the ace card gets thrown somewhere, that's not the battlefield, um, you lose the amount of memory stated in the overflow. So if you remove the War Graham on Ace, you lose four memory. So that that's like the downside, right? And so like let's say, okay, yeah. I have my level five metal Graymon out and I blast Digivolve into War Graymon. Okay, cool. And then my opponent decides to go, okay, cool, uh Gaia Force, and then War Graymon blows up, they get back four memory, and suddenly it's a four cost Gaia Force, right? That's the drawback yep. with Ace, is that, yes, it's a free Evo on your opponent's turn, but it's very telegraphed. You can, you can clearly see that it's about to come at you, um, and it has the overflow mechanic attached to it. Um, hypothetically, if you evolve in the raising area, or you just evolve into those cards naturally without using the Blasted Evolution mechanic, you're still susceptible to the overflow. So, like, if, you, if you're only level 5 and your hand is Zudomon, and you evolve into Zudomon, and you evolve over Zudomon into, like, whatever, the, that stack is gone? Okay, cool. Overflow triggers, right? So, case in point... Yeah. I feel like I feel like these are you know ace cards are pretty balanced. Tbh. Yeah. The one other point is that they're significantly cheaper play cost yes. than an equivalent level. Yes. Right. Like the level six here costs mm -hmm. six instead of like eleven or twelve. Yes. Right. Yeah. So overall, do you think these are good addition to the game? Yes, I think I think we've. I think Digimon, you know, after what three years now, I think we've gotten yeah. to the point in the game where we can have a little bit more interaction on in our opponent's turn. It feels it feels pretty good. Um, it adds another layer to the game just in general, having these extra layers that you really have to consider when you're, you know, coursing out like how you want to play out your game. Uh, you know, uh, oh, do I attack here? But then I'm, you know, susceptible to Ace. Okay, maybe I do a little bit of a setup. Okay, now uh, maybe I did you up into this so I can swing out on this to pop their Ace. It, it, it just adds an extra layer, which I think it brings yeah. a, a lot more fun, right? I think as we as we get more of these mm -hmm. and we get some of the more generic one, uh, it, it'll be more interesting to see yeah. deck build warp around having these kind of ace bomb to counteract certain strategy. Yeah, like I I know like you sometime uh, I I know like there was armor list that ran Zudomon for mm -hmm. example, and you just like completely get taken off guard because you're like you're trying to go in and you remove the armor stack and they just go Zudo. Yeah. 
and yeah, you just like, oh, oh man, like so. That so happened, yeah, that know, happened, so right? Talking about the meta relevancy of some of these, you know, ace cards. You know, like we said, Metal Guru on ace before War Guru on promo got hit. It was absolutely terrorizing everyone. War Guru on ace, not seeing a lot of play. It's like one or two. Deal Bro on ace is a promo Japan got. Um, it spawns tokens. It pops a body. It's really cool. It's good for the deck in of itself. Um, hasn't really done think- anything, unfortunately. Yeah, I wonder, uh, Dia Boromon, when I play against it, seems decent, but it might struggle into the Shine meta. So, until Shine yeah, gets hit, yeah, I don't it's think... Very, it's, it's not great into Shine meta. Uh, it's not very good into Mirage. Like, there's just, a, a, you know, a couple of things that it's kind yeah. of really awkward into. Um, yeah, if, um, if Shine gets hit, yeah. this might be, like, a very real deck. Yeah, but potentially, right? Um, yeah. Rush Tyranomon's okay. <laughs> like, it's there, there's it's just, decent. There's just, like, no deck that really abuses it. Um, Metal Greymon Ace is not very good at all. Tbh, this this like this effect of pop is like it does it just misses on most things. It's not really. Unironically, it's probably the worst Ace from that set. Funny enough. Yeah, it is the worst Ace in the set. Um, yeah, people um people can finally stop complaining about Greymon yeah. support. I guess. Zudo Ace, <laughs> however, this like, when you play Zudo Ace, you play this a four of this. He's playing so many blue decks. It's such an insane card. Strip yeah, two uh, and a bot deck any card without a source on your opponent's side of the board is nuts, on, especially when yeah, you're interacting uh, with your opponent. Yeah, like this get rid of a really powerful card like Dead X and stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's just just really strong. It's, and and it, the fact that yeah, the fact that this function has an on play too, yeah. meaning like you can like just slam it as like a just a removal. Yeah, I mean, and Zudomon was a really huge buff to Mirage Galgamon, actually. They um, they play four of the EX4 Mock Galgamon, and they just play four Zudomon and four Gomamon, and like they just yeah. go about their day, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Magna, Magna Angemon Ace was actually a really good card. Um, the heal plus the minus security allows you to pop a lot of floodgates. It allows you to just really uh, mess with some of your opponent's battle math. If they swing into your level 4 stack, and you uh, blast Evo into Magna Angemon Ace, and you like, minus them for 6 uh, KDP. Sometimes it's the Magna Angemon at 8,000 DP just fucking smacks them, you know? I think it gets even better uh, when you get Magna Jermon. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, like with BT15, this I think just become a lot better too. Yeah, and then we do have Lilymon Ace. Um, Lilymon Ace, this one doesn't feel as good as Zudo or Magna Ange, uh, in my opinion. Um, suspending something in a bot deck, I mean, it's, it's nifty and it's cool. Um, it's, def- it's, def- it's at least better than Metal Greymon, but being only being able to bot uh... deck 5,000 is kind of weak. I, the the other issue I think is that green level five slot is super competitive for the type of deck that we want to play. I think uh, I think I think the one upside is that you have so much searching in you know like bloom, which is you know the plant deck, right? You have so much yeah. inherent searching that you could easily run a one of Lily Ace and it's okay. Yeah, like, I think that's like that's the one upside, right? Like you metal Greymon, like as a one of it's just not worth it, right? It just doesn't do anything. At least with Lilymon Ace, you do have some applications. Like, you're spitting out so many bodies onto your board that you can get a Lily Ace prop, right? Right. Um, and then, obviously, we can't talk about the BT15 Ace cards yet, um, just because we haven't seen them in actual tournament play. Um, but surprisingly, the you know the Sovereigns are actually doing pretty well uh, with Feng Longmon and everything like that. It's not, it's not doing too shabby. Um, and you have these other cards from LM and Promo, but... Um, not a lot of testing has been done with them. Although I will say that the Amphimon one is kind of insane. It's just casually OTK. The, yeah, the Amphimon one is decent. Uh, Cyrus Mon actually saw whoa, a whoa, decent. Whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on. The Amphimon one is not decent. It's actually really good. It's actually <laughs> it, 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 it fucking Rider kicks somebody and OTKs them from like six. I mean, it's good. It's, it hasn't done anything. It, it it's done a decent amount actually. It's done a decent amount. It was it was it was doing pretty well to start at EX five, but I'm getting yeah, it got like it, it got. They got like three events. I'm, I'm, two, I'm, three I'm getting events. off track. I'm getting off track. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, serious mod. I mean, serious is like it's it's nifty, right? It, yeah, it's alright. But that yeah. deck, that gamma deck has been performing really well yeah. since the support set. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's very interesting. But just overall, right? It's like the good ace cards. They're doing pretty well overall, right? Like you, you yeah. would think a mechanic with so many, you know, downsides. Um, like, you know, tele- being telegraphed, having the overflow mechanic, like, you would think it would, like, you know, hinder the deck. Um, but no, they're doing relatively well, and I don't think they bring anything toxic to the game. I think they bring, like I said, I bring that new layer, that new fresh coat of paint that uh, brings a brand new dynamic to how you play Digimon. I think it's a pretty great thing. Yeah, I guess if you play OTK decks, you really hate them because they stop your OTK. That's 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 fair, yeah. <laughs> which, which I mean, I'm, I'm cool with that. I, I would have right there. Like, okay. Uh, I think I think the only one that's a little bit frustrating to play against personally is, is Melga Ace because I mean if you if, 
they, they gain the three memory and if you sometimes you need a swing to pop their stuff and sometimes you just get your turn ended and like oh man like that that's it just kind of sucks um i mean does it all right, all right, hold on. You're you're guru one player. I don't take your opinion. Yeah, the, walk, I mean, away, walk away. Walk away. No, no, no. Okay, what what does what's the what's the effect that's right underneath Metal Guru man says? What the when attacking? No, no, right under the name. That's a big letter. It, it, what the overflow? Yeah. What about so it? what? So if you swing to pop a stack, and they ace, the stack is no, 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 dead. no. Okay, okay. So like for example, I'll play D Brigade, right? And Deep Brigade can't pop anything that isn't seven cost or less. So right. I'm just fucking sitting there, parked, because I can't swing because Belga Ace fucking jacks That's... my turn. Also, that was two times where you forgot Ace okay, was yeah, in the yeah, But like outside of outside of those, like I I couldn't, no, I, I, couldn't mean... I couldn't kill it. I had no way to kill it because it's eight cost. That... War Guru Mon is eight cost. I mean, your deck has didn't have the ability to remove a level 5. So that seems like a deck building issue to me. Because Warguru won an 8 class <laughs> privilege! Yeah, I don't know why you couldn't just play an option to remove it. I'm just saying. I hate it here. I hate it here. I hate it here. I'm just saying! Like, I mean, you're making up all these complaints, but you're playing a deck that literally couldn't remove a level 5. So the, the, see, the, the point we're trying to get at is D Brigade sucks. Like, that's that's the real like way, thing we're trying to get at. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think Deeper Gate is pretty mid. Deep, it, it, like, yeah. deep police, though. That's, the, what, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. It's Deep Police. It was Deep Police. Right, right. But I'm just saying, I think Deep Police is super cracked now. Okay, now in BT15, we played this shit in BT14. Calm, calm down. Yeah. Nerd. I'm just saying, man, you could just ran the option to remove it. That sounds like a personal problem to okay, me. Okay, buddy. Okay. Well, anyway, um, overall, though, how do we how do we feel about Ace? What is, what is the final uh, thoughts? I, I really like Ace as a mechanic. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Overflow is just very heads up design. Like, they, yeah. like as long as they attach an Overflow to every single one of them, I can't... Be, uh, it's really hard for me to envision an Ace card being, like, broken book, broken, mm -hmm. right? Unless we literally get an Ace that just says skip your opponent turn or end your opponent turn or something, and you go to 3 memory. Like, outside of that, like, very specific type of effect, the drawback for just loop because they also design overflow in a way to where you can never really mitigate it yeah you can't play around overflow yeah like one i don't know if you know but one of the issue um with playing certain ace car is now that like if you're playing like a specific level six ace car and you're playing like an omnimon x or something mm -hmm. like that and you you actually run into the issue it's like oh man i can't bot that this level six in my source because I would get hit with overflow. Yes. Yeah, so there's like that. Oh, I think overflow is really well designed, and it might be too strong of a drawback right now, but I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, because we're introducing a brand new mechanic with a new way to play the game, so they can mm -hmm. maybe ease back on overflow eventually. But the way overflow is designed right now, three for level five, yeah, four for it level works, six. It works well. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, yeah. For me, I can't see them printing a broken ace. Mm -hmm. And then they're gonna print one to set, aren't they? Ew. Uh, do we have any, do we have any ace slots left? I don't think so. I, I, th uh, I think we're out, no? Cause, because Mel Melga's not gonna be an ace, because we know it's probably gonna be the secret rate of Mimic Ward Raymond, but like, I don't know. Um, we see Angel Woman, right? Yeah, we saw Angel Woman. Just the, the minus uh, 6,000 DP, and then it could be like minus another, it does like a little bit more, something like that. Uh, yeah. I guess nothing really. Uh, nothing, nothing too too brazy. Yeah, here it is. Uh, minus six thousand, and then it heals one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, nothing super crazy, yeah. but yeah, I think I think Ace is really well designed. Yeah. It's a very fair thing. Yeah, overall, um, if you had to give Ace a rating out of one out of ten, what would you give? Honestly, kind of like. I want to see A. I actually really like it. I, I think it added a new an, dimension to the an game. An A? Uh, like a what? An A. I said 1 yeah. out of 10. You gave me a fucking letter, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, it goes back to my previous rating. I gave You gave. You gave... No, you, you said 8 for training. No, I said B plus for training. Oh, that's right. You did. You did, you did say B plus. Yeah. You're see, right, you're, you're the right, one who... You're right, you're right, you're, you're right. Change it to number and... All right, all right, whatever. Any, anyway, uh, no, I, um, I do agree. Okay, okay. Number wise, number wise, like a nine. I do. Agree. I really, I really like. I really, really, really mm -hmm. like the concept of Ace. Yeah. I, I know that overall, um, 
it's kind of impactful the game, and it's not maybe it might not be the most impactful mechanic we've ever got. Mm-hmm. Like, but I think that's a good thing, right? I, I don't think having a new mechanic coming to the game and warping the game entirely around that mechanic is good for the game. So the fact that these can be impactful and still having like very significant drawback and all is great. And you just add a new dimension to the game. Just wait, and they'll stop so, printing Ace just like they stopped printing Digiverse. I mean, when did they stop printing Digiverse? The like 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 officially okay. So it's BT four and BT five where like we got a lot of Digiverse, and then we stopped at like BT six. No, Rasmus was BT seven. Oh God, I forgot. Ew. All right. Yeah. Ew. Uh, uh, it's, it's whatever. All right. Anywho. So that's the end of this video. Um, overall, both mechanics are doing pretty well for the most part. More so, tr- training is doing by far better. But they're both good mechanics. Uh, they're doing relatively well. And I'm excited to see uh, what the Digimon dev team decides to bring to us next. So yeah. thank you all so much for watching. And peace out. Bye.